So today I put away the art journal, but I kept out the napkins. I'm going to demonstrate a new to me technique called burned napkin decoupage technique. This is so cool. You don't want to miss it. Here are the three projects with the napkins that I've used with this burned decoupage technique. So what do we need in the way of supplies? Well, you need napkins. It also works with tissue paper. You will need some wooden or metal signs, a glue stick, Mod Podge or gel medium, and a barbecue lighter or lighter of some kind. So let's get started. So here are the wooden signs that I have in my stash. These ones are about half an inch thick. Make a note of MDF. And this one is very thin and it's wooden. All of these I purchased at the Dollar Tree, a buck 25 each. Now I'm putting a coat of gesso on them because the napkin that I'm going to decoupage on is light and I don't want the dark from this MDF to shine through and discolor or dull my finished project. So I'm putting a coat on the front and I'm doing the sides at this time. It's a whole lot easier to paint the sides out right now than afterwards when you have the napkin there. It's just less mess or potential mess. Now, while I'm using gesso here, I do go back and I add a coat of unbleached titanium on the letters, the K and the B, my initials, because the napkin that I'm using is off-white, ivory colored, and I wanted it to be a match. Now, you don't have to paint out the sides if you don't want to. You can continue doing this technique without that. So the napkin that I've chosen to cover my letters with is the Elizabethan Garden. And all these napkins are available at ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description box below. Now I've taken off the two plies of excess napkins. That's really important. And I have decided that I'm just going to use this lower right hand quadrant of the napkin. So I'm taking the same part of two napkins, one for the K and one for the B. And I'm figuring out roughly where I'm going to place this. And I'm doing this before I get any glue out, then I can move it around and I can sample. Now I could have done some stamping underneath with a script stamp and that would have shown through the napkin. That would have made a nice addition, but I didn't think of it till now, but you benefit from my learning. So once I know where I'm going to place the napkin or which parts of the napkin I'm going to use, I'm going to grab a glue stick. Just a plain, ordinary, run-of-the-mill glue stick. And I'm going to go right on top of the wood. Now I'm trying hard not to make get a whole bunch of glue piled up going around the edges because I don't want anything to stick there. And you do want to make sure that you have good coverage. Then take the napkin Hold it above where you want it, and when you've got it where you want it, press it down. And in order to get good contact, I grab my brayer. If you don't have a brayer, you can use it with your hands. The napkin is not extremely fragile right now because you haven't wet it on top, but it can rip, and I did rip some of them on the project. So you do need to be careful.
I believe my glue stick is the Elmer's glue stick. Now I've kept certain parts of this video at the normal speed, and I've sped up the things that are more repetitive. Because I want you to see how really quick and easy this technique is. Now, as I said earlier, this is not my technique. I did not create this, but it is cool, and I thought it would make a nice addition to my napkin journals. It's another way of using those napkins that we have collected. So place it on and then use that brayer to get a nice, smooth, great contact. Now I found it's easiest to turn this over and you want to cut off a lot of the excess. We're going to burn that, the hangover of the napkin off and it's going to go right to the edge of the letters. But in order to minimize flame, the more you can cut off, the better. Now I recommend if you're starting this technique, try with something simple like these letters and then work your way up to more complicated or more detailed. Now I'm just checking underneath to make sure that everything is fully adhered and you can just add a little bit of glue if need be. Now, <coughs> I did not wait for the glue to dry. It dries fairly quickly. So I'm removing the excess. And then I'm getting rid of any extra paper that's around my work table. And I'm puncturing. I'm just cutting out some of the middle stuff in this one as well. And these open spaces, you're going to want to puncture them, but you'll see a closer demo with that later on as well. As I said, I'm going to do three projects. Each one shows a slightly different variation, and I've learned things along the way, and you get to benefit from my learning. So now safety, we are going to be using flame and we are going to be um, using paper. So I removed paper from around my surface and I'm putting a tray of water underneath just in case and I have my spray water bottle there. And then you just take the lighter and you light it and keeping a close eye of where the flame is, just let it burn and it takes it right to the edge as you see it doing here. Now you can deal with one flame or you could have it going in two places if you can handle it. Go only as fast as what you feel comfortable with and use your own common sense about what safety things you need to do. Now grab a brush and just brush off the excess the soot, the ash. We are going to finish these at the end of the video. I've kept this part in real time so you can see how quick this is. Now remember I punctured out the centers and then I'm just lighting this. So there's no sanding necessary to get rid of this and it takes it right to the edge. Now I imagine if you were using this on metal, you might want to be holding the metal with something other than your fingers because it may get warm or hot. 
So again, practice as much safety as you can. And brush off the excess ash. So with this belief sign, I'm using this peacock napkin. Now this belief sign, I have a coat of gesso on the front as well as the sides. I'm removing both plies of the napkin. The hardest thing about this project was figuring out, trying to decide which of my napkins I wanted to use. I thought, oh, I was, I had some sunflower napkins. I have some pattern napkins that aren't really have any kind of focal image, script napkins, music napkins, really any theme, any color scheme is possible. Now here I'm showing that the napkin isn't wide enough. So I am going to have to piece on for the ending. So I'm going to show how to do that. Now this believe sign has the, the circles, the inside the letters are a lot smaller and it's a little bit more challenging to get them to burn. So again, I'm just taking the glue stick and making sure I get good coverage throughout. At the beginning, I said you can use Mod Podge. In the next project, I actually use my fluid matte medium. but you don't need anything other than a glue stick. Once the glue is there, I'm placing the napkin where I want it and I'm getting my brayer out to make sure I have good contact. Now I'm not pushing this one down, I'm going to piece for the final E from a part of the napkin. I grab my scissors and cut off the excess. Now I'm trying to be careful here. I don't want to waste any of these wonderful peacock feathers because you know I'll be using them in some other project, a napkin journal or another burnt de napkin decoupage project. So I'm trimming that off, getting so it's just one letter. And then I'm figuring out which motif do I want. And I want it to kind of look, be in the same orientation as the rest. You could do a different napkin for each letter if you want it. You're only limited by your imagination. making sure I've got good contact. And now I'm going in, now that I've got most of the napkin away, I'm just going to cut off as much of the excess as possible. So once everything's there, I grab my lighter, and I am lighting it, keeping an eye on if you got two sides of the flame. And again, get your water out, get your spray bottle out, practice whatever safety you need. It's extra difficult right now because I'm trying to also film this and make sure that you can see what's going on.
it was very easy to manage. It wasn't too stressful at all. And brushing off the excess. Now you gotta keep an eye on parts that didn't burn all the way to where they are and you can light those again. Just like I did here. If there's any pieces that are sticking up, we're going to take care of that in an, a future step. It may take a couple attempts to get into those little nooks and crannies. But again, I show if you can't get it perfect, what you can do later on. Now the edges do get burned a little bit and that you have to embrace that effect and take that into consideration when you're choosing napkins. Now all these little areas you want to puncture them and here's where you're going to go slow. It's a bit slower process getting all these parts and I was struggling with the lighter wasn't quite working later on and some of this didn't burn right to the end especially in the smaller holes it's really hard to get the flame in there and yet the angle, especially when I'm trying to film and demonstra demonstrate this for you. I think at some point I do end up turning off the camera and just being able, doing it myself. But just do it one at a time. step by step. Now I have a little piece that didn't get stuck down, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue and glue that down. Easy peasy. We're going to finish this one up later on. So now we're moving to this thin Merry and Bright wood sign. And this is the Christmas lights napkin. Now I actually have modeling paste on here that I put through a stencil. It was a project, a UFO unfinished, uh, project and because there's texture on there I couldn't use my glue stick so I am using my fluid matte medium and I'm pushing applying that with my brush and then I'm just going to place the napkin and press it in with my fingers I wasn't sure this was going to work, but since I had this unfinished project, I thought, you know what, let's just give it a try. And because I have to piece this napkin, I'm just 
salvaging parts from, of the napkin from here. When I ordered this napkin, I wasn't planning on doing this project, so I really want to save my second napkin for the project that I have in mind. Now, this napkin is has a really white background, which is why I wanted to gesso the sign. But you're going to see the problem with napkins that have a white background. Now, I'm not saying you can't use them. I'm just pointing out for me in this application, as a newbie, I did run into a bit of a problem and you're going to see what that is in a minute. So I've got it over my water source. I've removed the papers from around my where I'm lighting and I'm burning. It seems to go a little bit faster with the thin sign than those thicker MDF signs. But maybe that's just because I've done more of them. I'm getting braver because I'm lighting it in a couple places. Now, because it leaves a bit of a a burning, burnt ash around the edge. When it was white and I was brushing it, the background's white, it did discolor the, the background somewhat. And I really didn't like that effect. So I'd have to do this again and try it with a white napkin and see if maybe this was just user error this time around or whether that would happen all the time. But just like you don't want it to smudge. A little more of my napkin burnt there than I thought. So I'm thinking maybe I didn't put the gel medium or the fluid medium right to the end and the whole thing lifted and burned. So I'm punching holes in the spaces. This was definitely easier to get the flame for the thin one than the thicker signs. So now we're going to do finishing touches after the burning is done. The first thing I'm choosing to do is to seal the napkin down to the wood. Any little parts that aren't perfectly glued down, I am now sealing it with a good coat of fluid matte medium. You could use gel medium here as well. This is also making the top non-porous which will help it when you are going to be, if you were going to paint the sides, it just makes it so that if you get any paint on it, it will come off. Now with this one, with the white background, when I started putting the matte medium on, I got some of that charcoal or ash on it and it was discoloring the white background, but I've already talked about that. So there are no hard and fast rules, there are only, things that I've noticed, and I'm passing that along to you, you make your decisions. So I'm just giving all three of these projects a good coat of fluid matte medium to seal it. At the end, when it's all done, I will give it a coat of poly, wind matte, wind matte, wind, 
win wax, min wax, <laughs> polycrylic varnish. Now I've colored this one. I've gone in and I've painted it teal and aqua, and now I'm putting some gold on it on the top just to make everything work together. Where I got some of the teal from when I was painting the sides on the front, because I coated it with that fluid medium, I was able to take a baby wipe and get rid of it. So it, it protected it. Just adding a little bit of gold and just making everything work together. It just looked, it didn't look quite right with the white on the back. Now again, you could leave it plain. You could have just left it white. You could paint it the way I'm doing it. We have options. With this, the letters, I am splattering them with gold. I've touched up the sides with the same color, the unbleached titanium. There were a couple parts that just needed to touch up. And now I'm splattering it. I'm splattering the Marion Bright sign as well with gold, just to add a little bit, bit of bling and basically hide some of that discoloration. With this, I took my Posca pen and I'm going around it on the edge just to very finely outline it to make it stand out a little bit more. And here are the finished projects. I absolutely love my initials. I think this would be great for a wedding, the bride's and the, and the groom's initials. My believe sign. It was a bit tedious to paint the sides that teal color with the gold. Took a long time, but I'm really happy with the end result. And my Marion Bright sign, when this is put against a wreath or a darker, colorful background, like you're going to see in the close ups, it's just really going to pop. Give me a thumbs up, share this video, leave me a comment, ask me a question. Here are the three projects with their napkins. Thanks so much for joining me, and until next time, go get creative.